to Cooking Classic. I am your host, Kim McLendon, here at the Palamiti Culinary Institute. And today we are paired in the kitchen with Chef Brian Zawicki. Hi, Chef Brian. It's great to have you in the kitchen with us today. Thank you. It's great to be back. Oh, well, wonderful. I know. So you, as a former graduate of um, Luzerne County Community College of the Culinary School, you've been a little bit busy lately. So what have you been up to? I have. Um, so over the past couple of years, we now have two children that keep me incredibly busy. Congratulations. Thank you. And I am the sous chef at Wegmans up in That's Scranton. Wonderful. Okay. So you are a little bit busy. So yeah, just a little bit. Well, we appreciate you coming into the kitchen and cooking with us today. So I'm really anxious to kind of know what you're making. So you're going to be preparing a salmon dish for us today. Correct. So what are you going to be making? Okay. So it is, um, it sounds really complicated, but it's really not. So okay. it's a um, coconut lime cilantro farro okay. with Good. a miso glazed corn okay. and a sweet and spicy Asian rubbed pan seared salmon. Ooh, that sounds delicious. So that's definitely a gourmet meal. Well, we're looking Indeed. forward to making that. And when we come back on Cooking Classic, Chef Brian is going to be sharing with us his recipe at making that gourmet dish. Welcome back to Cooking Classic. I am Kim McLendon, paired here with Chef Brian Zawicki, a former graduate of Luzerne County Community College. Yep. And you're going to be sharing with us this delicious recipe of farro. Correct. So tell us, first of all, Chef Brian, what is farro and what are we going to do to prepare this? So farro looks similar to like wheat berries. Um, so it's an ancient grain. Okay. Um, the nice thing about it, the reason, a couple of reasons I like to use it. Um, first of all, it's a slow digesting carbohydrate, so it doesn't spike your blood, blood sugar as if you were to eat like a white rice or something like that. But oh, okay. I mean, you could certainly use white rice if you want to in this recipe. Okay. Um, but it's also a complete protein. Oh, okay. So, Very good. Yeah, if you were going to have rice, like rice and beans together would be a complete protein, but farro in and of itself is a complete protein, okay. so it's really nutrient packed. Wow, so you're actually saying that we could probably even eat this for breakfast if we wanted yeah, to. Yeah, absolutely. You could always make it like a steel cut oats kind of thing. Okay, wow, yeah. wonderful. Well, I'm anxious to see how we're going to be preparing this today. Sure. So what are we going to do first? Okay, so it's a coconut lime cilantro farro. Um, so I have, in order to get the coconut flavor started, I have some coconut oil here heating up in my pan. Okay. It's on like medium heat. Okay. Um, and I'm going to add the farro right into the pan to toast okay. it a little bit. Okay. Um, we're going to saute it almost as if we're making um, like a, a pilaf. Oh, so we're okay. going to get the grains coated in that coconut oil. And do you have to use the coconut oil? Can I use like a vegetable oil or maybe even like an avocado oil or anything? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, I would avoid vegetable oils probably, but an olive oil, an avocado oil, you know, anything like that. Again, really nutrient, nutrient dense mm -hmm. okay. Um, okay. oil. But just because we're making it a coconut um, flavored, I, you know, if you start with the coconut oil, it'll impart some of that flavor right, right, right from the okay. get-go. Okay, great. And then just toasting it, we're bringing out that natural flavor of the farro. Correct. Okay, it's going to make it a little bit good. nutty. Um, and you could, you could hear the grains kind of pop a little bit. Yeah. So it's going to bring out some of that nice nutty flavor that's, okay. that's in there. So just all you need is a, is a couple minutes over um, medium heat. Not even a couple of minutes. Maybe just a minute over medium heat. And okay. then to again enhance that coconut flavor we have coconut milk and it's just coconut milk it's one can about 13 ounces okay of, um, i'm using light coconut milk okay um if you're going to use heavy coconut milk there's a lot of solids in there so light coconut milk is just you know a very like a, a pretty thin liquid oh okay um, and if you don't like coconut then i mean you can certainly just use you know a vegetable or a chicken stock or something okay. like that to give it a little bit of flavor looks good so you see it's steaming a little bit Add that right in there. 
So you just have to make sure you want to look for that steam first before you go ahead and add that coconut milk in there. Right, you want to hear okay. that nice little sizzle. It's going to deglaze the pan. Bring all we're that gonna... flavor up off the bottom. Exactly. Good. Um, we're going to stir it. And now, just like rice. So that was a cup, one cup of farro. Okay. And it's just under two cups of coconut. Oh, milk. okay. So, okay. you know, usually okay. it's that two to one ratio. Yeah. So okay. just like rice, I mean, if you're going to use rice, if you're going to use a different kind of rice, you know, you could just look at the package to see how much liquid it wants you to use. Okay. And you could adjust, you could add some water if you need oh, two to your coconut great. milk. Great. Thank you. Great tip. Great sure tip thing. There. So then we're going to bring this to a boil. We're going to put our lid on it. And as soon as it comes to a boil, we're going to turn it down low and just let it simmer. Okay. So far it will take about 20 minutes. Okay. Not really all that long. So what are we looking for? Like once you kind of cook that farro, is it going to look like rice or are we going to, we're just not really going to look like rice, but it's going to, so we'll know it's done when all that liquid is absorbed. Okay. Um, that's what we're looking for. Right. Right. Okay. And taste wise, right. it's, it's the reason I love farro is it's got a chewiness to it. It's got like, oh, it has okay. texture to it. So okay. it doesn't just fall apart on you. Oh, wow. Well, I'm looking forward to trying it. Sounds so, good. So now what do you have going on here? You have some spices, it looks like. Is this yeah. for our salmon? So this is for our salmon. Okay. So we're going to do kind of like an Asian-inspired sweet and spicy okay. um, rub for okay. our salmon. So we have some brown sugar. We have some sea salt. We have some cinnamon. I have coriander, which kind of brings that Asian-Indian influence into it. It's kind of a, a florally spice. Okay. Um, I have some paprika, some garlic some uh, parsley, I have a little chipotle, and I have some uh, cumin. Oh, wow. So okay. yeah, a little a wider variety. variety. Oh, if there's something great. you don't like, admit it. If there's something else yeah. you think, like maybe like a five spice powder, but also bring a lot more Asian. Oh, okay. Food. I'm not crazy okay. about five spice powder, so just kind of. Okay, know. it's kind of create your own there. Right. That looks great. That so looks good. we're just going to mix them up. Now, is this something that you can also use? Maybe, maybe I wanted to make chicken. So I have a little of this left. This is multi-purpose. Okay. So what so I, I would actually do okay. is make a big batch of this. Oh, Get yourself okay. an airtight container. Okay. And store it in there. And you could use it on anything from pork, pork chops, pork tenderloin. Um, I wouldn't use it on a white fish, but okay. you know, a more hearty, meaty fish like salmon, st uh, steelhead trout. Um, Okay. You could certainly use it on like a cut of beef or some lamb if you wanted to. Oh wow! But great. something that has like a stronger okay. flavor to it. Okay. Well, great. Right. Thank you so much for the tip. Sure thing. Okay. So when we come back, Chef Brian is going to be searing that salmon for us and just showing us how that farro is coming along. So we will be right back on Cooking Classic. Glendon here in the studio with Chef Brian. Now, Chef Brian, you're going to be creating the salmon for us. So mm -hmm. we've already made this rub. What are we going to do next to get okay. the salmon started? So um, we're going to take our rub and we're going to liberally coat it all over our salmon. Now, when you're putting the rub on, is this something that maybe you should allow to sit overnight, a couple hours? or? Nope. No, okay. Um, what I what I do recommend, and this is not just with salmon, this would be with pretty much any any kind of meat you're gonna use, chicken, beef, whatever it may be. Um, I like to let it, the piece of meat sit out at room temp okay. for 10 to 20 minutes until it kind of comes to room temp. Okay. Because um, if you've ever noticed when you're cooking um, any kind of piece of meat at home, especially it's really apparent with the, with the filet um, of salmon that if you were to take that cold piece of salmon and put it in your hot pan, it shrinks up. Mm -hmm. So that those muscles kind of, because it, it's a muscle is what it really is, that piece of meat, it gets, it, it tenses right up. So if you let it come to room temperature, that's not going to happen. So it's going to be a more tender, um, 
juicier piece of meat. Oh, okay. Great kitchen tip. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for sharing sure. that. Great kitchen tip. And I noticed you, you had the skin on the salmon. Yes. So is that very important when you're searing salmon? Just get a little bit of flavor out of that salmon? So or? it does add flavor. I mean, okay. you're paying for the skin. Mm -hmm. So why not right. utilize okay. it, right? So it's the skin on salmon, salmon is edible. Okay. Um, so it's almost like that chicken skin kind of thing. You know, it's going to get crispy mm -hmm. and it's going to okay. have that, that, you know, crunch to it and that little bit of a salty flavor, fatty, okay. salty flavor good to flavor. it. Good flavor. Okay. Yeah, and all those absolutely. omegas in there. Really good. Yep. Okay. Wonderful. So what are we going to do next right. here? So I'm going to move my faro down here, give myself a little bit of room. Faro is simmering nicely. Looks great. All right. Cast iron pan. My favorite piece of equipment in the kitchen. <laughs> Okay, and you, why? Why is it your favorite piece of equipment in the kitchen? Because you could do anything with it. Okay. Um, if you were going to own any piece of kitchen equipment, mm -hmm. cast iron pan. It transfers heat really well. Okay. It retains heat really well. If, as long as you, you know, wipe it out, you can't, I mean, in order to clean it, all you have to really have to do is rinse it out, scrape anything that's left on it, wipe it down, and then wipe it with a coating of oil. Oh, And geez. it's okay. also not stick. So you oh, can cook great. eggs in okay. here. So it's oh, wow. you can bake okay. in it. Um, traditionally, like a pineapple upside down cake will be baked in a cast iron pan. Oh, geez. Now that sounds good, too. Yeah. Next time you come back, you'll have to make that for sure. us. <laughs> okay, so you're getting that pan nice and hot. Yeah. Looks good. And what is that you're putting in there? A little bit of so oil? So we have some olive oil. Oh, okay. Yes. Right. Is that an olive oil blend? or No, nope, it is. Okay. Just it's extra. Um, Extra virgin, like a okay. really good quality extra virgin olive oil. That's what okay. you want to use. Okay. Um, you don't need a ton of it. You know, the salmon's pretty fatty. Okay. A lot of people are afraid, I think, to cook fish a little bit. Um, yeah, I agree. I, I, I agree. Sometimes you tend to, you know, a lot of folks will say, well, I'm afraid to cook it because I don't want to overcook it or I don't want to undercook it. Right. So maybe if you're someone that's a little afraid of preparing this dish. So idealistically, what should the temperature of fish be at? About 145? So 145 okay. should be okay. fish when you're done cooking it. Okay. Um, I think people are also afraid to cook it, either in a pan or on the grill or wherever, because they're afraid it's going to fall apart on them. Oh, okay. All right. If that's you, then I would recommend starting with something like a piece of swordfish or a piece of salmon that's that's a more meatier, steakier kind of fish. Don't, oh, okay. if, you're gonna, if you use cod or something like that, it's more apt to fall apart on you. Okay. So give okay. yourself the confidence first by starting with a, with a more meatier piece of fish. Oh, okay, great. Okay. Thank you for the tip. Sure. That's great. All right, so our pan is nice and hot now. You can see it see smoking smoke just there. a little okay. bit. And the same thing, we want to make sure once we see that pan smoke, we know it's good right. and hot and ready. Okay. And you want to hear, when you put that piece of salmon in, you should hear that nice little sizzle. sizzle. Okay. So, you. Thank you. You're welcome. We're going to let that sear on the side. So I don't like to finish it in the pan. I like to finish it in the oven. So I have my oven preheated to 350 okay. degrees. Okay. Because if we, if you could finish it in here, but it's more likely to burn. Oh, um, okay. Especially because we have that brown sugar in our rub. Oh, okay. It's going to caramelize okay. really quickly. And okay. it's going to burn really quickly. Okay. And I also noticed that the skin is on the top. So yes. is that skin side up? Is that very important in making this dish? Or, or so not? if you start with it skin side down, um, so before I put it in the oven, I'm going to flip it. Okay. And then put it in the oven. Oh, okay. If you start skin side down and then flip it, when it comes out, the skin's going to be soggy. Oh, okay. So we're going to sear this tip. side first, get okay. it nice and golden, flip it so the skin's down, put it in the oven, and then um, that's going to help that skin to really crisp up. Oh, okay. Sounds great. Looks good. So, Looks good. so we're just gonna get that little crisp on there. Get that little crisp, okay. and you can see the way you know. Again, you know, people are I think afraid again to kind of cook fish because they're afraid it's gonna fall apart, yeah. and they they kind of poke at it a lot. And you know, you know it's ready to flip when you can do that to your pan, and it moves. So initially, it's gonna stick to the pan. Okay. But. Once you get that caramelization and that that nice sear on this on that piece of meat, okay. it's going to release from the pan. Oh, so then okay. it's going to make so it a lot it easier. There to then. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Don't so. don't poke at it. Don't okay. Same thing if you're doing it on the grill. Um, it will if you just let it go. It will easily just kind of flip over for you. Oh, great. Okay. All Thanks right. again for that tip. Sure it's thing. Good. And so I now, see it's coming right off the bottom point, there. Right? Wow, it looks great. Now we can flip it. 
You can see we got a nice little bit of color on there. Yeah, beautiful. Right. Looks great. So now we're gonna take it. I usually just let it sear in here for a second. Okay. And then you just pop it in the oven? Just pop it in the oven. Okay. Turn that heat up for a second. Okay. Get a nice little sear in there. And then we can go right to the oven. That's the other nice thing about cast iron. Okay. It goes right from stove right to the oven. Oh, wow. Okay. Looks good. All right. Well, All when right. we come back on Cooking Classic, Chef Brian is going to be pulling that salmon out of the oven, and he's also going to be creating his delicious lime corn for us. So we'll be right back on Cooking Classic. London here with Chef Brian and he is really sharing these wonderful gourmet uh, recipes with us today and Chef Brian you're going to be sharing your miso glazed corn recipe today yep. so uh, really interesting you know these two combinations so tell us how, how do you make this dish how do you how are we going to create this dish today so it's really very simple um, okay. it's going to have a lot of flavor but okay. again really simple oh okay. um, great so we're going to start with our corn um, I would suggest if it's in season, you use whole ears of corn. Okay. Cut the kernels off. Okay. They, they're going to have the most flavor. But if it's not in season for you at the time, you can certainly use frozen super sweet corn. Okay. About two cups of it is all you need. Oh, um, great. This is three medium-ish size ears of corn. Okay. Great. So, okay. Yeah. And what else do you have over here? Okay. So we have a little uh, semi-dry Riesling wine. Okay. We have our white mis miso which if you don't know, is a fermented soybean paste. Um, there's a lot of flavor in there, there's a lot of saltiness. So I don't, you know, I don't have any salt or anything like that because it's got plenty of salt in there. It's got okay. a lot of flavor. It's, it's got a lot of what um, maybe you've heard, um, uh, umami. Yes, yes. It's that kind of seventh, you know, flavor that uh, you really can't describe. It's like a meaty, salty, briny kind of flavor. And that's what that's gonna to bring to the plate here. Oh, wow, okay. Um, I'm again gonna use some olive oil and okay. you could either use butter or coconut oil. Oh, So I usually okay. mix the two a little bit. Okay. Um, especially if you use butter, you're gonna to wanna to mix it too because butter has a low um, smoke point so it's gonna brine you really quickly. So oh, mix, okay. mix it with olive oil, it's gonna bring that smoke point up a little bit. Okay. Um, you could certainly just use the coconut oil on its own, but I like to mix it too a little bit. Okay, and I'm sure probably using the coconut oil makes this dish a little bit more healthier too. It does, okay. and it kind of ties in with our coconut farro at right, the great. same time. Okay. All right, so we're gonna get our coconut oil here in the pan. And then just enough coconut oil to just kind of coat the bottom of the pan, is that what we're looking for? Yeah, yeah. Okay. we're just kind of, I mean, you know, corn really doesn't take all that long to cook. Um, we're just looking for a kind of a quick saute on it here, and then we're okay. gonna glaze it. Um, so I'm just, oh, just hang out. Just a little bit of olive oil. A little bit of olive oil. Okay. Don't need a whole heck of a lot there. Um, again, we're gonna let our pan get hot. Take our corn. Looks good. So, Chef Brian, you have two little ones, and so now Thank your you. two-year-old, you were mentioning, likes to sometimes cook, or not really cook, watch you in the kitchen? He likes or? to watch. Okay, um, okay. He likes to, you know, he'll help out if I'm, especially if I'm, I'm baking something. Okay. He'll sit on the counter and kind of, you know, I'll let him add, you know, some spices or some sugar. Great, Likes okay. to smell it. Um, his own little kitchen. Oh, so that's So while I'm wonderful. cooking, he'll kind of go and play and make, you know, great. make Aww. food in his little kitchen too. That's so great. it's really super cute. I think it's important to start kids that's early true. in the kitchen. I agree. I, I feel agree. like kids, they don't really know how to cook, kind of losing that skill. So right. you get them right. interested in it. And I think, you know, he's two, so he's picky. But if it's something that he kind of helped you make, he's gonna be more excited to at least try it. That's right. He might not oh, like yeah. it, but at least he's gonna, you know, right. want to try it. That's right. Well, so. we're, we're gonna recruit him for the LCC um, Culinary Kids Camp. So. Sounds good. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. 
Well, that looks really good there. So it's like, it has a nice sizzle to it. Mm -hmm. Looks good. We've got that coconut oil in there. We've got a little bit of the olive oil in there. And now what you're doing is kind of what? Just get a little bit of caramelization. Just a little corn. bit of caramelization. Okay. And you're going to see the corn is going to start to stick a little bit to the bottom, bottom of the pan. Okay. Um, there's a lot of sugar in okay. sweet corn. Mm -hmm. um, so as that sugar and those starches come out, um, they are going to stick to the bottom of the pan a little bit. And that's okay. 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 We, that's, that's, that's flavor. So we want to add that flavor to our dish. And what's going to help it to um, pull all those sticking pieces up on the bottom of the pan, it's, it's a technical term for that, it's called fond, mm -hmm. F-O-N-D. Um, so to get that fond off the bottom of the pan, we're going to deglaze with some kind of liquid. Okay. So I suggest that you pair this dish overall with a semi-dry Riesling. Okay. And I'm gonna cook with that also. I would never cook with a wine that I wouldn't drink. Okay. Um, it's really important. I think people yeah. tend to buy a cheap wine and That's use it to true. cook with. You know, just buy a wine that you like. It's a good wine that's gonna go with your dish. Use that to cook with it. And then you could enjoy it with your meal afterwards. Sounds great, sounds great. Now maybe what if we didn't want to add the wine in there? Maybe we wanted to add something else. Sure. Could I add something else? If you didn't want to add wine? wine, I would suggest that you add it some stock, chicken or vegetable. Okay. It would be would be perfect. Oh, okay. All right. Great. great. Good tip. Sure. So we just want to wait until we get that little bit of caramelization I see on the corn. Right. And then we'll go in and deglaze. Then we're gonna deglaze. And then we're going to put our miso, a little tablespoon of miso right in okay. because we, we want that to, to break down and melt into our wine. Okay. Now, is miso readily available in most stores? I or, think you know? in okay. this day and age, it's pretty much available in most stores. I mean, you okay. could certainly buy anything you want online. Okay. Um, but okay. I would say most stores are going to have miso. It's refrigerated. It is, it's fermented. Um, it's not pasteurized. Um, so it is like a raw living product okay um so you're gonna find it in the refrigerated okay. section okay all right thank you well, that looks great it looks beautiful yeah so i mean you just want that miso to kind of melt okay um, um it's almost as if we're gonna add like a um like a like a chicken base or like a chicken bouillon okay. in here it's kind of the idea so i mean you can make you can make miso that. soup mm -hmm. okay um so it's the same kind of idea so it's a vegetarian also a vegetarian dish too. it is vegetarian. so it is that's absolutely great. that's wonderful so we're just making sure that we've kind of melted in, incorporated all that miso. And once we've done that, we've kind of completed that. That's corn. it. Wow, um, looks Like great. traditionally, okay. you know, if you were gonna cook corn on the cob, you could do it on the grill or you could boil it. Here in a sense, we're kind of boiling it. You know, we add that liquid in, uh, we add our miso in, and it's gonna simmer in that pan with the liquid. Once that liquid is all incorporated and it's kind of disappeared from our pan, it's absorbed into the corn, um, then we know it's done. And you can see it's kind of got that nice shine to it. Yeah, you can beautiful. see it's not sticking on the bottom anymore. Um, certainly, if you keep cooking it, all your liquid's gonna dry up and then it's gonna stick to you again. Okay. So you wanna leave it with a little bit of liquid on it. Okay. So I would say at this point, looks to be about done to me. Yeah, it looks good. And one more question. Sure. Can I use the cast iron pan for this? Absolutely. Okay. All Absolutely. right. Absolutely. Great, great. Absolutely. Well, we will be right back on Cooking Classic as Chef Brian begins to plate up that amazing dip. We'll be right back on Cooking Classic.
Welcome back to Cooking Classic. I'm Kim McLendon here in the studio with Chef Brian, and we are getting ready to plate up this gourmet meal that you have prepared for us today, mm -hmm. Chef Brian. So let's get everything put together and let's sure. get it all plated up. So right. what so, are we gonna do now? Salmon's done. We're gonna take that out of the oven. I'm gonna let it rest while okay. I finish up my farro. Okay. Okay, so we can bring our farro over. You can see all the liquids absorbed. Oh, yes, right. it looks great. So in order to make it cilantro lime, you obviously have to add, add cilantro and some lime. So I have the zest of one whole lime. Okay. Add that in there. I have the juice of half a lime. Add that in there. I have some cilantro. If you don't like cilantro, a lot of people don't like cilantro. Um, it's actually a genetic thing. Some people, it tastes like soap to them. Um, so. Just certainly, you know, omit it if yeah. you don't like it. Okay, okay. Just gonna mix that through, break up those grains. You could really smell um, that, that beautiful lime flavor from that zest. And it looks really good, very, very colorful too. It bit. is, it is, that's what's nice about it. So at this point, we're ready to plate it up. Okay, I'll grab your plate for you. So. If you're having friends over and you want to impress, get a food form oh, or a biscuit cutter. Okay. Right? Okay. This is a this is a great dish for it because okay. this sticks together nicely. Okay. So we're gonna take some of our farro. Just right into that molding. Right into ring. that mold. Now, is it true you can make a molding ring out of a tuna can? You could. Okay. The only thing I don't like about that is it's got a lining, a plastic lining in it. Oh, you know, okay. So some of that plastic can kind of leach off into your hot food. This okay. should just stay all stainless steel all the okay. way through. Okay. So. And you can get this at pretty much any food store. Or order online. Okay, great. Yeah. Okay. It, or you can just use a biscuit cutter, which you can pretty much find. You know, oh, anywhere. great. Okay. Good tip there. We're going to top it with our corn, which is also at this point, um, thanks to the miso, a little bit sticky. Okay. Which is going to be good for our molding purposes. And then you're just kind of lightly packing that lightly down. Lightly packing okay, it down. Okay, right on top of the um, I'm going to say lightly. I would say, you know, I'm packing it down pretty okay. well. And then, you're going to want to take your spoon and kind of hold the food in there. Nice, right. beautiful. Get a piece of salmon. Looks great. And plate that right on top. And then I have a little bit of arugula. I just like to add for a little bit of color. I have a lime wedge. And then I would finish with just a little bit more cilantro. Again, wow. if you don't like it, don't add it. Wow, but that looks absolutely it. amazing. Well, Chef Brian, thank you, thank you so much for sure being thing. a guest here on Cooking Classic. We are looking forward to taste testing this. And again, join us next time on Cooking Classic as we share more wonderful recipes.